close-up look at the great Benny Leonard. Gallant, handsome, above reproach, a bachelor until his late 30s. I'm just a mama's boy, said Benny Leonard, and proud of it. Filmmaker Bud Greenspan. The most vivid memory of Benny is it was difficult to ever believe that he was a prize fighter. He was as gentle as a lamb. He never thought of himself as anything other than a Jewish uncle. He could tell the jokes, he could put his arm around you, he could cry at funerals. He was just a decent human being, which was untypical of the profession he was in. Born Benny Leader, 1896. His family, Orthodox Jews living on New York's Lower East Side, home to much of the city's Jewish community. To new immigrants, yet a part of the American mosaic, the skinny kid from Avenue C was Hope. Screenwriter, Bud Schulberg. I used to think his name was the great Benny Leonard because I always heard it that way. Benny made some people think differently about Jewish people who were looked on as people who were brainy, but not especially brawny or tough. He was a completely different kind of uh, Jewish image. Clean living, a sportsman, an athlete, things that anti-Semites would never associate with being Jewish. It was an important moment historically for young Jewish people growing up. If Benny can do it, we can do it. To help his struggling family, Benny started boxing for money at age 13. Later, afraid his old world parents would find out, he changed his name from Leaner to Leonard. The strategy didn't work. When I was a little kid, I used to box in the backyards. One day I reached the age of 16, I went out and boxed a fellow and received $20 for this fight and a black eye. My dad came in and he said, look at your face, fighting again for what? I reached in my pocket and brought out a $20 bill and put it in his hand. My dad showed my mother, my mother cried, she didn't care about the money. My father turned to me, put the $20 bill into his pocket, pat me on the shoulder and said, Benny, my boy, it's all right. When are you going to fight again? <laughs> Though his father gave Benny his blessing, in a 15-year career, the leaners would never see their son box. The prospect of Benny being hurt kept them away. And so they weren't there to celebrate on that night in 1917, when at age 21, he knocked out Freddie Welsh of Wales to win the lightweight title, the first New Yorker to win a world championship. The next day, one reporter wrote, Leonard moved with the grace of a ballet dancer. He wore an air of arrogance that belonged to royalty. We've never seen anyone better than Benny Leonard. And when America went to war in Europe, Leonard used his popularity unselfishly, appearing at war bond rallies, and also instructing the doughboys in hand-to-hand -hand combat and the art of self-defense, despite risk of injury. Remember that. Patriotic, with a dry wit. In his prime, Leonard's bouts drew as many as 50,000 fans, extraordinary for the time. He was a superb boxer, with equivalent offensive and defensive skills, and his ability served his ambition. A deep-seated desire to walk out of the ring virtually untouched. Boxing historian, Bert Sugar. He was such a student of boxing, but for Benny it was almost as important how he looked is how he fought. He was a handsome man with brilliantine hair. And woe to the man who ever knocked one hair out of place. In 1925, lightweight champion, undefeated, he retired in his prime because that's what his mother wanted. His first purse was 30 cents. Now 28, he had made more than a million dollars boxing, much of it invested in the stock market. When it crashed in 1929, Leonard was among the victims. Two or three of my thousands of friends claimed that I might need some money, that I lost some money in the stock market. Oh, I lost a couple of hundred thousand dollars in the stock market, but say, listen, that's a couple of hundred thousand dollars when you got a couple of million. But Leonard didn't have a couple of million. He was nearly broke. In 1931, as the depression deepened, he made a comeback. 35 years old, balding, slower, flat-footed. This Leonard was nothing like the slim dancing master of the previous decade. Most of his bouts now were pathetic displays. His last was a mismatch against the tough Irishman, Jimmy McLarnon. Yeah. 
That was a big night for me. I'd been licking quite a few of the Jewish boys. So Benny Leonard got himself in shape. We packed Madden Square Garden, 18,000 people. I hated to punch him because he's one old friend. He, he was getting hurt. And I was beating him up pretty bad. And so the referee stopped the fight, which was I was very happy about. Leonard once said he'd be in boxing until his final breath. And so it was. In 1947 at New York's steamy St. Nick's Arena, Benny, now a referee, collapsed as he was about to work his sixth bout of the night and died in the ring. Bud Greenspan. It was more than a shock, it was incomprehensible. It was one of the few times I really cried at a sporting event. It was very hot, and then suddenly he fell down. He just went, Psht! and that's when I started to cry. I had never seen death before, and I'd never seen death of a friend before. Upon his death, the man called the King of the Lightweights had no riches, but he had earned an outpouring of love from the many lives he had touched. A gentleman in a savage game. Leonard will go down as one of the great lightweight champions of all time.